in April on the 20th, or 420, is a day for celebration for marijuana enthusiasts. I'm told right now 20 states and the District of Columbia have fully legalized recreational pot, but that doesn't mean the black market is dead and investors overseas are taking notice. My next guest writes in Politico, quote, Chinese investors, owners, and workers have emerged in recent years as a new source of funding and labor for illegal marijuana production. Let's bring in Natalie Fertig. She's a federal cannabis policy reporter for Politico. So when did we start to see this boom in Chinese-funded marijuana farms? Growing in the last few years, Oklahoma is currently the uh, the core of this uh, this growth that we're seeing, but it's also existed in small amounts in California and Oregon for potentially decades. There's a lot of questions, though. I want to be clear about where this is all coming from, about who exactly is involved in this, and about how far up the chain this goes in terms of does the Chinese Communist Party actually know that this is happening or not? And why go into the illegal uh, part of the business since you could you could be legit? Well, you actually have to be an Oklahoma resident in order to get a license in Oklahoma. So that may pose a problem for someone who is coming very recently from China, which could be happening. The What's happening, though, in this country right now is that just over 20 states have legalized marijuana. That's not even half the country. But demand is increasing across the board, including in states where cannabis is not legal yet. So there is still a demand for cannabis that the legal markets in legal states like California and Oklahoma cannot meet. And so there are people now producing cannabis illegally or unlicensed within the United States and selling it in those places where cannabis either is really expensive, like New York or New Jersey or Chicago. Those places have legalized marijuana, but it's very expensive. Or selling it in places where it's still illegal, like North Carolina. And what's the going theory or the multiple theories for why Chinese entities or interests would be getting in this business? Still about that. When I've talked to law enforcement and to experts, they say that they want more answers and that they need the federal government to get involved in order to find those answers. Um, law enforcement that I talked to in California in particular said their jurisdiction only goes so far. And when they see money leave the country and go to China or go to another country that they think may head eventually to China, that's something that they can't follow and that they need the DOJ to get involved and to work with them to trace that down. It could be, these could be mom and pop, small operations. These could be organized Chinese crime, which we know are akin to Mexican cartels and are doing a lot of the fentanyl um, trafficking around the, around the world and things like that. And so the big question here that experts are telling me they want answered is how involved are the triads, the organized crime? How much does the Chinese Communist Party know about these? And then why cannabis? Because it's not fentanyl. It's not the, the, um, it, it's just not as big of a deal as it maybe was 30 or 40 years ago, right? Cannabis mm -hmm. is very legal in the United States now, um, in, in many states. So why now is the big question. There's questions about, is this money laundering? Mm -hmm. Is this a way for Chinese organized crime to shift money around in the United States? And cannabis isn't really the focus is it also uh, we've seen reports um, I've reported on it. Some other news organizations have reported on the human trafficking factor, which has shown up in multiple states, Oklahoma and California being two of those at Chinese funded um, cannabis grows that are not licensed. And so is this trying to find somewhere to put workers there's a lot of questions um, that need answered, and the, the real key here is going to be the federal government coming in and trying to help answer some of them. A lot of fascinating questions. Natalie Furtick, thank you for being with us.